thank you for introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Xi Wang from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. The title of my talk is Weekly Supervised Learning for Host 9 Lung Cancer Image Classification. This is your joint work with Hao Chen, Tai Xiaogan, Professor Han, and so on. I'm going to present our work in the following five sections. First of all, I'd like to give a brief, brief introduction of the background. Lung cancer is one of the most commonly diagnosed cancer among people. It has become the leading cause of the cancer deaths in the US. Appropriate treatment for lung cancer patients primarily depends on the type of lung cancer, such as small cell lung cancer and non-small non cell lung cancer. And the later one can be further divided some uh, several subtypes. As we know, a typical host line image may contain more than 10 billion pixels and the finest magnification. But in most of cases, only the image level labels are available, but the tumor regions are sparsely distribu distributed in the host line image. The ground truth label for individual patches is actually unknown. Most of researchers address this problem in two steps. Firstly, they find a good feature representation for host line image. Then they apply a decision fusion model like random forest KNN SVM to output the image level label. In the first two methods, they make use of the annotations of the tumor region and a lot of head graphic features are used in their method. Differently, several weakness supervised learning methods like multiple instance learning are also proposed to address this problem by using the image level labels only. But uh, this method plays more emphasis on the design of the decision fusion model. Handcrafted features are intensively used in their method. Both of the last two methods applied the CNN to address this problem. But in the first method, the CNN that it is pre-trained from other domains like ImageNet is used to extract the off-the-shelf features from the patches. But in the second method, a CNN is trained iteratively by updating the training samples with the discriminative regions. But this method is extremely computationally expensive due to the iterations of training and inference. Inspired by the previous work, we proposed our method, which consists of three parts. That it can overcome the drawbacks in the previous work. The first part is a patch-based CNN that is trained to output the cancer likelihood, and it can help, help us to find the discriminative regions. And then we take the rich spatial information into account and propose several context-aware feature selection and aggression strategies to obtain the global features. Lastly, a random forest classifier is uh, employed to output the image level prediction. We adopt the ScanNet as the patch prediction model, which is actually a modified VGD16 network by placing the last three collector, fully collected layers with the convolutional layers. At the inference stage, the FCN can take an arbitrary size image as input and make the faster prediction. As we know, fully supervised learning for host line image analysis is sometimes not practical since it's very difficult and expensive to obtain the pixelized annotations. But uh, it's uh, uh, feasible to use a large number of image level labels and a small number of annotations from, from the pathologists to design the weakly supervised learning method. Here I show some examples of the annotation, annotated uh, images. 
as shown in the figure, these allotations are quite coarse. So it's not safe to take all the allotated regions as the positive patch and the others as the negative patch. In our work, we also assign the image level labels to all the patches from the same image. But we believe uh, it's reasonable to put more emphasis on the allotated regions since they carry more confidence to manifest the cancer type. So we designed a weighted cross entropy loss function. Among the, these parameters, M denotes the cross annotation mask set, and the alpha is used to place more weights on the annotated regions. Previous work considered the patch with higher prob probability is discriminative. They tend to use all the discriminative patches, but there are two major drawbacks. Firstly, it might lead to the feature redundancy, since uh, due to overlap the patch uh, regions during the inference. In addition, some outliers or mimics with high probability will have negative effects on the quality of the global features. So in our method, we take the rich spatial information into account. We introduce a term block, which refers to a, a, a number of overlapped patches and showing the figure. A block is considered discriminative only if the average probability within the block is larger than a threshold. So we'd like to find the discriminative blocks instead of discriminative regions. Recall our goal is to find uh, a good feature representation for each host line image. The general procedure to obtain this feature descriptor consists of three stage feature aggregation. Firstly, the FCN takes the block as input and outputs the probabilities as, as well as the deep features from the last convolutional layer. According to the average probability, we can judge if the block is discriminative or not. If yes, we can extract uh, one single feature from these uh, deep features. We call it a block descriptor. For each class, we, can, we, may, we may find uh, several discriminative blocks. So we combine these class descriptors uh, uh, block descriptors to obtain the class descriptor. Lastly, all the class descriptors are combined together to obtain the global descriptor. At the first date, there are several pooling strategies to obtain the block descri descriptor. The first one is the max future. It is to take the block with the highest pro probability as the block descriptor. And the average feature is the fusion of all the patch features within the block. Uh, each feature has the equal contribution. Similarly, weighted feature also take all the uh, features into account. But the feature, the contribution of each feature is proportional to its probability value. Then we simply average all the block descriptor to obtain the class descriptor. This stage can guarantee the dimension of each class descriptor is the same. Lastly, we concatenate all the class descriptor to generate the global descriptor. Eventually, we apply a render forest classifier to output the image network prediction based on the global feature descriptors. We conduct uh, experiments on more than 900 uh, non-cancer host line images, which are collected from Sun San University Cancer Center. This is the data set consists of four classes. Among all the 
host nine images, only 59 host nine images are closely annotated by uh, pathologists. Before training, we choose the working level that has a resolution of one micrometer per pixel, and we use the OTSU algorithm to segment the tissue regions. During, during training, we apply several data augmentation techniques to enrich the training samples, such as rotation, translation, flipping, and color gathering. With intention to compare uh, our, uh, the performance of our uh, method with different uh, uh, size training images, we divide the data set into different uh, groups. Uh, as for the first two settings, M1 and M2, there is a small number of training images. In M1, we use typical cross entropy loss function, but in M2, we apply the weighted cross entropy loss function to train the neural network. Differently, in M3 and M4, there is a large number of training images. The difference between them is also the usage of the uh, loss function. We also implement uh, several feature aggregation methods which are commonly used uh, in the previous work for comparison, such as majority voting. Each patch votes for one class, and the class with the majority votes is taken as the image level prediction. As for the average pooling, it is to calculate the average probability for each class channel, and the class with highest probability is the final prediction. Similarly, max pooling is to select the highest probability for each class channel, and the class with the highest probability is taken as the final prediction. As for the content-based render forest, we count the votes for each class to get the histogram. Then the render forest outputs the image nail prediction based on the histogram feature. Component-based render forest is to extract the the geometric features from the collected uh, components uh, of the probability map, followed by the random forest classifier. The last three methods are our proposed uh, strategies. This is the experimental results. We can see, as for the first uh, three methods, the performance is not very satisfactory, since this method only depends on the instance, instances only, whereas in lack of the global information of the host line image. In the following two method, methods, there is a considerable boost on accuracy. They integrate the information from the instances and create a global feature for second stage classifier, which is more robust to output the image level uh, prediction. Inspiring, our method outperformed the previous methods by a large margin, since not only the feature of multiple instances is used, but also the rich spatial information is taken into account. We can notice that uh, a small number of course annotations can contribute to the improvement of the accuracy. We also implement two weekly supervised method for comparison, and our method also achieves the best results. This success primarily owes to representative deep features from CNN in conjunction with the context of their feature selection and the aggression strategies. Even though our goal is not tumor detection, but our method can achieve such goals simultaneously. 
by retrieving the most discriminative regions and show in the figure. The last two columns are the heat maps generated by CNN with different uh, training configurations. And uh, we can notice that by adding a small number of course annotations, the robustness is further improved. The heated map generated by M4 is very consistent with the uh, annotations from the pathologists. Lastly, I'd like to make a brief summary. In this work, we propose the weekly supervised learning to address the whole slide image classification problem by using a large number of image level labels and a small number of course annotations. Experimental results demonstrate that deep learning method has great potential to help the pathologists to address clinical tasks. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for this interesting talk. Other questions? Um, thanks for the very interesting talk. So if I understand correctly, uh, before your own methods go to the weekly supervised part, you still need some labels to pre-train the model, right? No, uh, our network is uh, randomly initialized. The parameter is randomly initialized. Can you go to the very first slide of your the, the, the overview of your model. Sure. Yes, uh, just next one. Next, next. Yes, this one. So, is the first stage the A part, uh, discriminating the patch prediction? Is this kind of uh, pre training? Oh, uh, we assign the image now label to all the patches from the same host line image. So, we didn't, uh, oh, okay. So you, you used the uh, host slide image level for all the patches? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one. So you could also take, take these block descriptors that you use and put a CNN on top of those instead of a random forest and then train that end to end. Is that something you are considering to do? Uh, yes, uh, we'd like to replace the random forest classifier uh, with, uh, by the uh, multi-layer perceptual to make the uh, pr uh, process to end-to-end -end training. In the following work, we'd like to try this. Thank you. Um, uh, I was wondering, uh, regarding the first question, um, I yeah. guess this would work in the case the majority of the patches are consistent with the image label, but have you tried the same the same thing in whole slide images where the uh, where the lesion was very concentrated in a space? Thanks. Uh, sorry. Uh. Um, yeah. Um, regarding the first question, you were saying that you were assigning in uh, in a fully supervised manner yeah. the image level to all the patch to all the patches in the in the whole slide image. I guess this works if uh, the lesion is very concentrated in the, in the whole slide image. But in the case it is not, uh, have you tried this method also? Because um, then the patch labels won't be consistent with the image label. Um, uh, currently, we uh, apply our method into se uh, different uh, data sets. Uh, one, uh, another data set is the uh, uh, stomach cancer host line image, but the tumor regions are not concentrated in the, uh, uh, in the region. They are uh, sparsely distributed in the host line image, but uh, our method can also choose the in promising results on, the, on that data set. So we believe uh, our method is generali generalized to uh, another host line images. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.